It's a nightmare. That's load shedding in my life. It's a nightmare. It's just a nightmare in my life. It's disappointment, but it's also dread, like about not being able to do all the things that I need to do. They've, they've gone off while I was in the middle of a Zoom call at work, or while I was busy rendering a project, and it just goes off, and I've lost all my work. Um, well, load shedding um, seems like it's something that's quite unique to South Africa. I need to check in other places, uh, but basically, um, as early as around 2008, if I believe correctly, um, the South African government began to impose uh, load reduction um, to alleviate the pressure on our very strained um, electricity grid. Um, this is something that um, our South African government had knowledge of for decades before it actually became a reality. Yes, so um, yeah, a method of load reduction to uh, alleviate the pressure on our grid um, because of a variety of issues in the past we've had the site uh, rain conditions that have made the coal wet uh broken down reactors um or generators um and so it's an opportunity for the the, the grid to be able to recoup some of the energy um outputs um so yeah um i was going to reference that i, I think it was around in the 1990s, the energy minister at the time, Herno Maduna, um, actually notified the government of the strain that our um, our electric our grid was go electricity grid was going to experience within the next few years. I think at the time he'd given a span of about seven to ten years, and basically notified them because of our um, generation capacity. Um, issues around our um, degrading infrastructure that we were going to need to make alternative arrangements to be able to meet the country's growing energy needs. The ruling government at the time and the president being Thabo Mbeki did not take the necessary measures um, and in fact basically said, not now, um, we don't have the capacity to do that right now, we'll come to it at a later stage. Um, and that's led us to the issue where we are right now um, and we've been since 2008, so going on 15 years. So some of us as the, the youth, myself, have um, only ever known of, um, you know, load shedding um, as just a fixture of our lives. Shedding started in South Africa exactly 14 years ago. Meaning that if a child was born in the year 2006, they've lived through load shedding. My name is Mkoli Sipoi. I'm a project manager at a data science company and uh, on my side I am an app developer. Load shedding is a pain, honestly speaking. It's a it's an issue that we're currently facing. It's you know when the power grid they they downsize the power to us consumers and they reduce it and we get cuts. It's power cuts basically. Um, firstly it costs me a lot of time and then time is equals money because with the team that I work with, that are currently helping with developing, I have to pay them per hour. And if there's a delay in communication in any form or way, it delays that and it costs me money. Also, um, when the power is down, then I would have to subsequently work at a restaurant and they're traveling to go there. You can't just sit at a restaurant and work. You need to order something. So if that's an unplanned order, there's a financial implication there. So honestly, load shedding is, is a big, big um, inconvenience. I, I, I don't specifically remember, but forever, since I've been in business, I've been experiencing load sharing. Uh, my name is Zoli Khale, and I run a backyard restaurant, Momotla Game, called Budzoli's Kitchen. Remember when it's load sharing, I lose network. All the beep sounds that you hear, it's people ordering food. So when it's load shedding, my orders don't come in. Now we change from power, we will use gas. So that's an extra additional cost to the business and it's pinching some. So I'm losing money 
and I am losing clientele within that loan sharing process. Fast rate, it, 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 it stops the circulation of the business. You see the motion, it's moving in sequence. You can hear the buzzes, the buzzes, it's messages coming in. When low shading comes, that ain't a stop, it stops, it flips the whole circle. Like, we have to move stoves, we have to move gas, we have to plug gases. So now you change the whole sequence of the whole thing, and it's just that we adapt to it. But like they say, adapt or die. My fridge is messed up because of load shedding. My point of soil is messed up because of load shedding. My stove is messed up because of load shedding. So it's just a loss, 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 loss. Because the power just goes and it comes back, comes back with, I think, a lot of impact, like the electricity guy and so it damages certain things. So all I'm just saying, think about us. The government must just stop killing them, small men. We are suffering. Because we're not going to have got backup generators. They don't feel what we feel. It's, it's not a nice feeling. Running a business in the township, it's dark. Safety, security, number one. For, you know, what if you get mad? Security system, alarm systems don't work. Surveillance cameras don't work when it's cold shit. So, in a little ripple effect, it's, it, it's more dangerous at night. Like, it's a mess. You pray for it to go away. Like, it must just go away. Load shedding plays a huge role in our lives. It affects a lot of things, personally and business-wise. That's why I'm saying if, it go, it's, if it's going to last for five years, then we, we, we still have going to have tough times coming. My name is Lerato Matabate. I'm a branch manager at a retail store located in Mosageng. Our load shedding here would be sometimes at 8 a.m. until 11 a.m. and then again at 6 p.m. until 10 p.m. So twice in a day four hours, twice in a day, is a big problem. It's a huge problem. This affects us in the store and when you get home at night. So it, 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 it's, it's bad. It's bad here in the location. Some of the stores that are around us actually close because they don't have generators. So it, it's very bad. We lose money and therefore we need to cut down on staff because we cannot afford them. We cannot afford, if we have five people in the store or 12 people in the store, we need to start cutting down people because we cannot afford them. We're losing customers, there's no money coming in and yet we have a high wastage of food or items that we are selling that are, are not selling due to load shedding. My name is Dr. Jean Bassett and I am the Executive Director at Vitkopen Clinic. Yes, the current crisis does have an impact on the medical field. Um, patients are utilising alternative fuel sources when there isn't electricity such as candles or paraffin and then what we see is we see more patients presenting especially children with burns and you know that's a horrific and incredibly painful um, experience for anyone let alone a child and that is a direct impact of not having electricity. So load shedding has had a significant effect um, at Vitkopen. Vitkopen is fortunate that we do have a diesel generator, um, so therefore we in fact um, are able to keep the lights on, so to say. However, the cost of the diesel has risen significantly in the 
um, past couple of years. And in fact, our expenditure on diesel in the first um, six months of this year has in fact doubled the expenditure for an an on an annual basis in the past um, few years due to the amount of load shedding that we've had. The net effect of that is that one has to utilize, you know, sort of funds to pay for electricity when in fact we could utilize it for nurses and their salaries and we would then be able to see more patients. And in fact, I actually worked out what our savings on electricity and diesel could be, which forms about 21% of our fixed operational costs. I worked out that we would be able to employ an additional two nurses, which translates into an additional 13, 14,000 patient visits on an annual basis. So it's almost lands up being that you are spending, you know, money on diesel, electricity, whereas if one went off the grid, that you would be able to provide far better and more healthcare services, which are, you know, very much required in the population that we're serving. So, you know, to curb the effect of load shedding, Bitcoin's got to have a plan B for, for everything. So to ensure that we can still operate and provide our services. So therefore we've got a generator and in fact all the um, computer equipment has got backup um, UPSs and backup batteries to ensure that we can continue operating, you know, quality service to our patients. So obviously our energy infrastructure that we use is um, in South Africa is 80% uh, dominated by coal um, and most of the um, you know ancillary energy sources that we would use are fossil fuel derived. So renewable energy is a way of generating energy um, through engineering solutions that doesn't require us to explore fossil fuels, extract fossil fuels um, for the for the benefit of um, having energy. If it's a solution to stop load shedding, I am for it. If it's a solution to stop load shedding, I am for it. You understand? Despite anything, I definitely think that um, shifting to clean energy is in fact the way to go. I know that there would be um, a large initial outlay for that, but I think the long-term benefits are significant because the ongoing costs for electricity and diesel um, you know, would then not be part of one's fixed operational costs and one could utilise that money towards healthcare um, services, which we all know in South Africa, um, access to quality health care, especially for the people that are marginalised, is difficult to access and we need more access to health care. And that would be the advantage of moving to clean energy sources. I do know that it's the future and it's basically the solution that we are looking for. Right. Uh, renewable energy is alternative forms of generating electricity and uh, energy, basically. We don't rely on just coal or we don't just rely on oil and petrol, but we rely on other models of generating electricity and power. For example, solar energy is one big, big, uh, most efficient alternative to, to producing electricity. That's, that's the best one. It even works in the motor industry. You're now starting to see electric cars. It honestly is the most abundant resource and it's for me the best form. Uh, There's also uh, wind turbines that can produce um, some electricity. There's also, uh, you know, uh, uh, gas, although that is still more of a natural resource. So 
for me, uh, renewable energy is really all about something that should be sustainable. And as a government or country, we should all be leading in that direction.